Hello, Goos, and welcome to the first big update video for Goo Engine. We're going from 3.3 to 3.4, which means we actually have all of the new Blender features from Native Blender. Um, that's why we go through the painstaking process of updating our fork to to match the native blender, you know, <laughs> code and stuff. Uh, it's not easy, but it's it's worth it because of all the updates. But we also added a bunch of new custom features as well. So that's pretty exciting. I want to go over those in particular with you guys um, because you know the, the blender the blender updates you guys can check out on the blender channel and you know on the blender website and stuff. But for us, we we're gonna. We have a lot of features to go over, which I'm excited for. So I'm, I'm going to go over them real quick in the patch notes. If you go to the Patreon, we have a, a public post about, you know, what is actually updated. And one of our most exciting features is finally in Goo Engine, and it's node-based light groups. This is a huge thing because it's something I've personally wanted for a while. Light groups were great. They were very, very helpful, but they made it difficult to use multiple light groups in the same shader. You had to use you know, a single set of light groups for an entire material. And it was a bit limited in terms of what you could do with it. Now, even though it was already very helpful before, now we have the full flexibility of adding light groups to specific parts of a node tree. So what we've been doing, for example, is separating out like environment lights from like, you know, the character shading lights. And that's something that you can actually do now with the shader info node, with the light groups being separate. So we we have a whole new workflow that we're going to be using for this next production, um, where we're going to be using node-based light groups for our, our characters and for the environments as well. So I'm super excited for that. And I'm hoping I, I'm hoping you guys can find some good use out of it, because I think it's, it's a huge game changer for light groups. So that's in there now. Um, and I'll demonstrate some of that later as well. But we also did a quick little cleanup for the nodes. A lot of you guys have been asking sort of like, you know, is there an easy way to find the, the custom nodes? And so we were like, yeah, let's just let's just put them in a single uh, category. Because, you know, when we have them scattered amongst the, the, the normal nodes, it can be difficult to know if that's a Goo Engine node or if that's a, a native node that you just haven't looked at before. But now we have a Goo Nodes section in the shader editor. So you can actually add, you know, and access these nodes through the Goo Nodes category on the add menu. So hopefully that helps out a little bit as well and also helps, you know, new users who are kind of curious about what Goo Engine offers. Then we have a few quality of life changes. We have the screen space stroke thickness for grease pencil. This is something that I personally asked for because we use screen space stroke thickness a lot for grease pencil, especially for the line art. But for some reason, the, the thickness scale was, you know, disabled when you when you choose that option. Now, typically, if you guys don't know, um, if you go into the world space thickness option, like it's 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 fine um, and you have the ability to scale everything all at the same time, essentially. Um, which is basically a kind of a global strokes option here, as you can see here, uh, at least for this particular object. And so you, you can change the thickness a little bit like that. But with the screen space one, originally you couldn't do that. If, if for some reason, I don't know why. But now we've added it back in and you can actually change the thickness sort of globally for the object um, uh, as a modifier on top of the existing thickness uh, setting. So that's super, super helpful for tweaking line art and stuff like that. And then we also have a very simple sort of thing that we did for the outliner, which is sub collections can be forced to enable when enabling a parent collection by holding shift, which is actually exactly the same behavior as, you know, other things. For example, you can hold shift here and you can turn off the uh, render visibility or the, or the viewport visibility of, of an entire collection and all the objects inside of it. Um, but we noticed that, you know, for sub collections, you can kind of do that. But if you turn this off and then you turn that off and turn that back on, it doesn't turn back on. And so we kind of got annoyed at that. So we were like, let's just let's just do that. You hold shift and now it can sort of turn on every collection underneath it uh, or turn off every collection underneath it, but that's already default. Um, but yeah, so now that's something that for us makes finaling and makes rendering a whole lot easier because we're not, you know, fighting certain like having to turn on collections manually and all these things. Now we also have a couple other things that are really, really cool. Two more features I want to talk about. One is a new animation tool, quality of life tool that I'm very, very excited to talk about. Even though it seems simple, it is an F curve isolator. Um, so this is something that like, um, you know, uh, we, we've seen requested a lot, but uh, we recently sort of started talking about it because of how, you know, it can help a, a lot of animators sort of get used to the graph editor in Blender because technically like the graph editor in Blender, oh my, my oh, that's kind of shaking a little bit. So, oh, oh my, that's weird. Um, mm, that's probably just a sizing window issue, surely. 
no that's that's weird that's super weird i'm gonna look into that later but anyway um we, we noticed that basically if you if you went to the graph editor here um it would be i mean it's kind of a mess like there's there's not a whole lot here but you, if you do that and then like you know you, you do you know you, you do this or whatever and then and then you it's like okay which which one do you want to actually manipulate it gets really messy uh and you can you can you can go here and you can select something and hit shift h and that's like a whole process but only after you're pretty comfortable with using blender already now i've noticed that a lot of other software make it really easy to use the graph editor by simply isolating the curves in an easy way and so what we've done is we've added a new feature where you can right click any transform property or even custom property right click it and then you click the show f curve in editor operator and you do that and it will automatically hide every other curve and isolate it and focus on it for the exact domain um, and then it you'll be able to edit it and and you'll be able to understand exactly what the curve looks like immediately um there's just i mean it's just such an amazing feature that allows editing to be so much easier in the graph editor because a lot of people only want to edit one curve at a time i mean let's be real everybody only wants to edit one curve at a time. I mean, I've never seen uh, most instances you don't want to do multiple. So having an, a shortcut to actually show just one curve at a time, huge game changer, huge time saver. Um, and you can also add this to a hotkey if you want to, you know, it's up to you. Quick favorites as well works, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, so really, really great feature. I'm excited to use it. Um, and so are our animators. Um, but yeah, that's one feature. And then we have one more feature, which is a quality of life thing for rigging. Um, something that also kind of helps animation, to be fair. But we basically added a flag for hiding bones in the outliner for easier outline-based bone selection. So this is something that we've noticed that like animators don't really have access to outliner selection. Because look at this. This is a Rigify rig. And you have hundreds of bones that are useless. Because animators, they only want to touch the control bones but all these bones are like you don't want to touch them as an animator but they're all exposed and you can barely even see the actual controls and you and you can go into like the the hierarchy and try to find them but you're not going to find them just quite frankly so the outliner becomes completely useless for animators especially for bone selection i mean you have, we have all these bone pickers and stuff but at the end of the day if it was in a list it'd be easy unfortunately it's not and it hasn't been for a long time ever since blender started using you know this weird hierarchy thing is like all these are not useful well not blunders it's technically like the rig's fault but at the end of the day th this rig is great it's just hard to read in the outliner so we added the flag now we have a hide and outliner flag in the viewport display options for each bone and when you turn that on you turn on the hide out hide and outliner property um it will actually hide the pose bone in the outliner so you can have it so that it only displays the control bones in the outliner uh, you just got to make sure this is checked off and then you're good to go. And you'll have something that looks really, really clean. So here, any animator can actually just select these bones and, and start animating them. It's a, it's a bone picker, essentially, that's just based on the names. But without any extra, you know, like UI or anything like that, we already have something in the outliner that's very, very useful for animators to select bones. And so that's something that we, we just got as a feature request internally. Uh, and our animators are much happier for it. So I'm very, very excited to use that as well because it's, I mean, it's just a, it's like, it's, it's these, these are the kind of things that like, if we are able to submit them as a patch to, you know, native Blender, we will, but it's just a question of like, you know, how much effort will it take to actually get that to, to comply with their, you know, standards and stuff. Cause we do want to make sure that we, um, do it right. But for the time being, they are in Goo Engine. So if you guys want to take a look at these features, feel free to try it out. It's gooengine.org, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, those are the big features for uh, Goo Engine 3.4. Um, Node-based light groups, I'm going to make a tutorial on that sometime, you know, next week or something like that. Uh, it's very, very simple. Basically, it's the same as normal light groups. The big difference, of course, is that the light group setting for each node is in the, the, the end panel or the side panel in the shader editor. Uh, so you can change the light groups there. There's still a material light groups option. Of course, that's going to be the default. If you don't click on this, uh, this option here, the light groups uh, checkbox, um, by having that turned off, it'll just listen to the material uh, settings. But if you want to turn it on and isolate to a new set of light groups, you just turn that on and you just go to the light group section. It's the same UI. So you're good to go. It's everything super intuitive. So I hope it's going to be really, really self-explanatory, but I do want to do a demonstration of that or like a tutorial on it, uh, sort of how you can use it um, in the near future. So excited to see you guys soon in that video but in the meantime yeah if you guys have any questions about goo engine's new features let me know 
Um, but uh, that's it. So I'll talk to you guys. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Yeah. All right. Bye bye.